And meanwhile, back here in Washington, President Biden also marked the anniversary of this tragedy, and he again appealed for congressional action. How many more parents will live their worst nightmare before we stand up to the gun lobby to establish universal background checks, establish a national red flag laws, require safe storage of firearms, and end immunity from liability for gun manufacturers. The only, the only major corporate entity that doesn't have this immune to liability. Even a majority of responsible gun owners support these common sense actions to save lives and keep our community safe. This concern about guns and the violence that is done with them is growing in this country. Our latest NewsHour NPR Marist poll finds that four in 10 Americans believe schools in their own communities are not safe from gun violence. Half of all U.S. parents with kids under 18 know someone who has experienced gun violence. And six out of 10 Americans now say it's more important to control gun violence than to protect gun rights. That's up 11 percent since the Sandy Hook massacre. But Republicans and Democrats have long had very different views about what practically can be done. And that brings us back to Amna in Uvalde. Former Republican Congressman Will Hurd is one of just a few in his party calling for meaningful gun reform. He represented Uvalde for six years in Congress, serving Texas's 23rd congressional district. And I spoke with him just moments ago. Congressman, welcome. Thanks for joining us of here. Of course. You heard some of the frustration from those families about the lack of action after their children and loved ones were killed. What's your message to them as you're here today? Well, the, the message to, to the families is I'm sorry and, and keep fighting, keep telling the stories, right? Because that's what's going to ultimately uh, get these elected officials to come around. Um, I, I can't even begin to imagine what the, the loss of a, of a, of a child Right. And, and it's the worst it's the worst pain that anybody can ever have. And, and, and unfortunately, I saw that at, at a young age when I was at Texas a &M University, when bonfire collapsed, different different story, different issue. Right. But having to t talk to parents when I was 22, they say, you know, parents ask me, don't let this happen to anybody. I, I just don't know how any elected official that is talking to a parent who has suffered the worst loss that they will ever have, just is not willing to do some of these common sense things uh, that could solve this problem. Um, we know if you, move, if you turn the age to have a high caliber uh, rifle mm -hmm. to go from 18 to 21, which is, it's, you have to be 21 to get a handgun, that alone would have changed Uvalde and would have changed the lives of, of 21 families. And, and so, so the, to, the, to the parents that I know it's hard for them to wake up on, during the day, I know it's hard for them to sit in the room of, of, their, of, their, of their child, their nine-year-old child who is gone, um, but it's gonna be, it's gonna be uh, their efforts and telling their stories um, that is gonna see some change. We saw it here in Texas yeah. um, at the State House. Now that piece of legislation um, didn't, become signed into law that's right um, but but it was it was movement and it was because of the of the of the parents well, of you value let me ask you about some of the things you have been calling for specifically because as you've mentioned in a recent piece you wrote for the Atlantic some of those measures like raising that age from 18 to 21 or criminal background checks red flag laws those have broad support in among the American public right. but so did universal background checks sure. and when you were in Congress you were one of just a handful of Republicans to vote vote for that. So if your Republican colleagues couldn't vote for that back then, what makes you think they'd vote for something the majority of Americans support today? Well, look, it's it's a good question, and I wish I had the answers, right? And I think I was one of eight, maybe, uh, uh, back then when, uh, when, when that happened. And then the reality is, responsible gun owners believe in background checks, right? Like, I don't know anybody who owns a gun who hasn't been through a background check. People that, whether this is their livelihood or they do it for sport or whatever, like responsible gun owners mm -hmm. believe 
people should have a background chance. So what's keeping that's, that's the majority simple. of Republicans uh, from Look, a, that. a lot of Republicans are concerned that they're going to have people on Twitter or social media criticize them and be like, oh, this is going to impact you um, in, in an election in the future, and you're going to potentially lose a primary. That's ultimately the fear. Mm -hmm. and, and is that a valid fear? I, I don't think it's a valid fear, right? Because I always I always tell people, I'm like, listen, I have as, as you know, the similar problems in a primary that anybody else had, right? And, and I was still able to survive because you've got to be willing to go and explain why these things matter. And I'm sorry, like you, you just can't look uh, a parent in the eye and, and, and feel like there's nothing you do. And if somebody says there's nothing you can do, they're lying, right? Because there are several common sense steps mm. that are supported by Republican primary voters, that are supported by Democratic primary voters that prevent this metamorphosis of someone into a mass murder. I want to ask you about the mental health piece yeah. of this, too. You've called for that. A number of others have as well. As you know, after the Uvalde shooting, there was a bipartisan congressional bill. It had some gun control measures, also had a billion dollars sure. in school funding for mental health staff. The majority of Republicans did vote against that. So how do you see the actions sure. of your Republican colleagues sure. matching up with the calls for more mental health resources? Well, well, well look, I, I think the proof is in the pudding, right? You know, people always want to talk a big game, but it, it depends on, on it depends on your actions. And when we look at, well, first off, we need to start treating mental health in the United States as health because it is. Um, you know, do people know who to call? If if somebody on you know today this afternoon gets sees something on social media that someone they know are going to are, are exhibiting a dangerous behavior, do they know what to do and who to call? And if they do find the right person to call, does that do they have the resources to to respond to that to prevent that action from happening? And these are some of the basic infrastructure that's not in place. Also, some of the basic training that you don't have in schools, in, 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 in businesses, on how, to, on how to respond when you have this. So look, a, a lot of people talk a big game, it's in their action, but here's ultimately what's gonna have to happen. For people that care about this, more than half of our teenagers are worried about going to school because they think they're gonna get shot. Mm -hmm. That's 25 million kids. That's insane. And then add the parents on top of that, right, who are equally as concerned. If, if, if you don't think that is a problem, right, or, or if you're one of those people that are concerned, then you need to get involved, you need to go vote, and not just vote in November. You gotta vote in primaries. You gotta get more, and, and, and I don't care what your political affiliation is, mm -hmm. you gotta say, hey, this enough is enough, and there's always people in those primaries that probably are a little bit better than what our options are in, in November. That's the kind of activism that we're gonna need in order to see and change and build it. In the few seconds I have left, speaking of primaries, you mm -hmm. were asked recently if you would join the Republican primary presidential field. You said mm -hmm. you'd make a decision by Memorial Day weekend. That is this weekend. So sure. are you running? So I, I actually, I, I said I'd make a decision soon. Right, and um, if I have the opportunity uh, to serve my country, I will, and I plan on making a decision real soon. Okay, former Congressman Will Hurd, thank you for joining us. Thank you.